Hello, my name is Sylvia Alonso, and I work for the International Livestock Research Institute based in Ethiopia. I'm presenting today a project we've done in collaboration with the African Union in the context of the CADE Biennial Review. For those of you who might not know about it, this is an initiative developed by the African Union and launched in 2015 to track progress um, on agricultural development in African countries over, over a period of 10 years. It includes a series of indicators all related to agriculture and that countries are supposed to monitor and report to the African Union every two years. In 2019, the African Union, uh, in response to the increased interest and recognition of the importance of food safety for agricultural development in terms of economy, but also in terms of health, the impact on health, uh, decided to include also a food safety index. This is what is called the African Food Safety Index. Um, so in this project, what we've done is, is look at, at that index in, in detail and see what, what it tells us. So I wanted to just start by saying a little bit why is this relevant to the audience of the ANH Academy Week. So I think for a couple of reasons. First of all, because food safety is necessary for good nutrition and for good health. Because if food is not safe, it's, it's no, not food. Uh, but also, um, secondly, because this project, I think, is a, is a good example of um, how we as scientists uh, can, in working on this field of work, can engage with policymakers and even at quite high level to make sure that policy that are evidence-based and, and also that our work is actually taken up on the ground and translates into impact and changes in practices. I think this is quite a one, neat example of that. But, but back to the index, this is the African Food Safety Index is basically composed of several indicators that are included in three sub-indexes, the three of which, when put together, it speaks about the um, food safety situation in a country. And those three sub-indexes speak of three different aspects. One is, is the systems in place in the country to allow monitoring and, and controlling food safety, so legal framework, laboratory capacity, all that. The second sub-index speaks of health, so it monitors how you know, food safety related health issues. And the third one speaks of trade, monitoring food safety related trade issues. So by looking at health, by looking at trade, and by looking at the systems in country, we expect to have a clear picture of what is the food safety situation in a country. In this study, along, uh, together with the African Union, we wanted to look at the data that the countries have submitted in 2019 and see how much that data and that APSI is meaningful and robust to tell us about the food safety situation in a country. We want also to identify factors that um, enable to report appropriately and, and accurate data to the AFSI, and also factors that actually hinder the accurate reporting of AFSI. And then with all these, obviously, proposed recommendations for improvement. We did this using three approaches. So we've been doing the quantitative analysis of the, um, of the data submitted by the countries. We've also conducted uh, visits to nine countries selected um, from different regions of the country, and of the continent. And, and the, on those pieces, we did interviews with several experts and people that have been involved in, in the reporting. And we are also currently doing an online questionnaire to all the countries in Africa to get more information from those involved in these processes. So on the first two elements, uh, for which we already have data, um, um, in terms of the quantitative analysis, uh, what we notice is that 50 out of 55 countries submitted data, and this is a great success, and it shows the level of buy-in for this um, index. Um, this is compared to other indexes on agriculture that um, were not as highly reported in 2015, basically. What we also saw is that the health, the indicators related to the health index and the trade index, actually a lot of countries fail to report appropriately on those. And I think this um, can be related to two aspects. One is that probably in the technical guide, those indicators were not very clear, but also the fact that probably countries, uh, some of the countries really struggle to have surveillance systems that produce the type of data that is required. Um, in terms of the food safety systems index, a lot of the countries reporting on this one, so, so the countries are able to report, but we noticed by looking at the data that the, the discrimination capacity of the, um, of 
this index to tell you know good countries from very good ones or very bad from just neutral and average is not too good. So I think the index needs some tweaking to improve that at the moment. And all the indicators on this index put together actually fail to create a food safety system scale, something that measures overall the food safety in the country. So these are little things that, that could actually be improved. When we went in the country, um, we actually took all the information to explore various aspects on data availability, accessibility, and quality, also the submission process and the relevance of APSI for the country. In terms of the factors that were that felt were essential to good reporting for APSI is that there has to be good um, interinstitutional collaboration in the country to facilitate access to the data. Uh, there should be actually, there must be good reliable uh, monitoring systems or venue systems to generate that data. But all in all, in APSI, um, it was felt that it was a very useful matrix that can raise the profile of food safety in African countries and also advocates for more investments on food safety by governments. So that was um, perceived as very positive by the countries. Now, what is it that hinders the use of the APSI? Financial limitations that limit the, the availability and accessibility of the data. The fact that often there's uh, surveillance systems for foodborne related issues don't really exist. And, and other aspects as limited sensitization, but such certain institutions. So, I mean, obviously this is very generic, but just to say what we are seeing so far is that basically there is an opportunity right now to capitalize and invest on food safety in Africa. There is high buy-in and interest by countries and should, we should actually take advantage of that. The apps need some tweaks to be done from a technical point of view so that we maximize how useful it is for countries, to allow them to know what the safety situation in the country is, and to allow them to benchmark themselves against each other in the continent to see how they are performing also in the light of progress in the next, say, five years or so. Countries need financial support to make it really happen, and also they need sensitization in country, and we need to create better linkages with existing surveillance platforms. We don't need to create new surveillance systems. We just need to use those existing ones, but perhaps increase a little bit the focus on food safety related issues to make them more specific. So I think this is some of the recommendations we are extracting so far. And we hope that, you know, alongside all the things that we'll get to know once we analyze the online questionnaire, um, will be taken forward by the African Union in preparation for the next biannual review in 2021. Well, with all this, I thank you.